services update, and we'll start with an introduction from Autumn, Autumn Monahan, who is um, manages all of our communications uh, for an introduction to the topic. Autumn. Thank you, Mayor Polly. So a few meetings ago, some questions came up about um, Comcast service, specifically on Squawk Mountain, and we're all super reliant right now on our internet service, me included. Um, so we have invited Carla, uh, who's the Director of Government and External Affairs at Comcast, to provide us an update of uh, their work in the area. There's been a whole lot of work happening on Squawk. So with that, Carla, thanks for being here today. Great, thank you, Autumn. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Great, so I'm going to try to share my screen. Joanne, I know that you said that that was an option. Am I permissed? Can I go for it? Great. Thank you all. So let me just share with you. Sorry, everybody. Okay. And I will say, as an introduction, as I'm working through technology to share my screen, I am one of the working mothers. So I also appreciate Superintendent Thiele joining. And I would say, I also am appreciative of all the teachers. It's been a tremendous lift. All right, and I just pressed share. Hold, please. Did it come through? Can you guys, can folks see that? Yes, it yes, just popped can. up. Okay, and I'm going to actually, I'm gonna turn my camera off, so. Wait, I don't. All right, so going forward, I just wanted to kick it off by saying again, thank you, Madam Mayor, and, ta and to the task force for having me. I agree, appreciate the opportunity, and I also want to just take the time to cover a couple things and review with you what I want to cover. So first of all, as I mentioned, um, and as I was introduced, I am the Director of Government Affairs and External Affairs here in Washington, and also a proud Issaquah resident. So I understand um, the urgency and need for just connectivity and the importance right now with everybody, all of us that I see on the, on, these, on your image of your camera working from our homes and, and doing our best to be connected, whether it be to a job or to school or just resources. So um, I'm excited to share just some updates with you. First of all, I just want to share a little bit of network, um, share a little bit of updates, just generally speaking in regards to Comcast and our network overall. And then I want to just talk a little bit specific around Issaquah. And then I will share also um, some updates around the work we're doing to provide internet to students um, and affordable internet at that for various families. And then last but not least, I'll kind of wrap up with some resources um, that might be available just for folks to, to be aware of and or for future reference. Great. So I can probably make this full screen, folks. Let me see if I can do full screen. Full screen. Let's try that. Does that let me see if that makes it a little better for you. Is that better? Okay. That is. Thank you. Yes, thanks. So just this is a lot of it's very busy, but it's also just really talking about the network. You heard about I think I want there's a common theme that I just I want to kind of bring over from Superintendent Thiele is it's complicated. I mean, there's just, things happened quickly and we basically have been running and making sure that our network is up up to the par and the needs for what's, be, what's been happening since COVID began, pandemic and quarantine. And so I think top line, just kind of share with you some updates is, as mentioned, we're seeing an unprecedented shift in our network usage, not to be surprised by anybody here. And understanding that, you know, the speeds and the capacity, the customers, generally speaking, they're working. People are on calls like this, they're learning, they're being connected. Overall, we're seeing, you know, the traffic across most markets um, is, 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 it has plateaued and is kind of leveling off now as we head into, you know, the fall. And, I, and a couple other things just to call out is, you know, we are, how we typically run our network is we already sort of ratcheted up, meaning we, in, we add capacity to the network so that if extra room, so meaning if there were to be some urgent situation, not planning on a pandemic, but that is what happened, that essentially the network was prepared. And so because of that, the network has held up. Now, that to be said, there has been some opportunities for us to come in and make some enhancements, and that I'll share with you next. But, um, you know, it's working. You're seeing here that usage is up across the board. We're seeing that Wi-Fi usage is complete, has really increased while we're seeing cell phone usage go down because people aren't out and about as much. And then just the, the network is 
constantly being monitored. We have engineers that are constantly looking at it, monitoring it, and doing our best to kind of adjust as needed and to see how we can um, we can do adjustments on the back end without having to impact the end user. That all said, I just want to show this is a very simplistic view because, again, I just want to repeat what the superintendent said that it's complicated. Getting a network to a home and providing technology, I wish it was as simple as ordering a package from Amazon. And I shared this with uh, Mayor Polly and Autumn earlier, but it's just, it is a, it's technology and it's just a bit more complicated. So this is a very simplistic representation of essentially how services get to your home. There is a node and there is an, this node or a node connects and provides service to a batch of an area in a community, which I'll share with you next specific to Issaquah. And so it's providing services, as you can see here, to these, to these homes or these locations. And so there's a number of different nodes throughout, and that's how, and then off of each node, there's these different legs or different runs. And so how we help that when I talk about monitoring the network is we kind of look to see how we're balancing out the legs of each node and adjusting, you know, so where we where a home is on each node, if that's necessary to kind of just keep it leveled and adjusted based on what we're seeing for um, usage. So it's very high level, but I just, I think the visual might help a little bit. And then what I wanna share with you, I'm sorry, if I, can, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to toggle here. I wanted to share with you specific to Issaquah. So let me see if I can do this. Oops, that's not, that's my next page. Sorry folks, I'm gonna do, sorry. I have to toggle to a different spreadsheet here. Here we go. Okay. Let me go back to full screen. Okay. So this, what you're looking at here is, um, this is a confidential and proprietary map. So Autumn and Mayor Polly, this may be a little bit different as far as it's not as descript as what I shared with you, you folks. Um, but what you're looking at here, and I do apologize that it's a little bit tiny, but ultimately what you need to look at is these, I've highlighted two main areas. This is one highlighted area, and that is an area that a node would serve. And you're kind of seeing these black outlines, and that may be, that's where another node would serve. And then this is over here, the Squawk Mountain, where that node would serve. And so I highlighted that these two areas are nodes, we call them nodes or areas, as mentioned, um, where we recently had some capacity strain. And we've worked through this area here. We were able to add, you know, I showed that visual of what is called a node, and we were able to add another node, which helps offset some of that capacity. But I do want to call out that, as mentioned, there's nodes all throughout here, and they're all functioning and they're working. Now we're seeing ebbing and flowing of the network, and that's where we adjust it. But in this node, I say node generically, of those legs that I showed, only one of those legs was having capacity issues. So generally speaking, we were able to add another node to offset that leg that was having the capacity issues. So that's what we're seeing. And this one's completed. This area over here was completed, I think, two weeks ago now. And then over here into Squawk Mountain, which I know is, I, I understand the need for this to have, you know, the, the most optimum services possible. This area is in process currently, and I'll just, I'll high level the background on this one. To do the work that is required to build out another node in this area, we do have to have a permit from PSE. And so because that was um, scheduled to be out, we weren't scheduled to have the permit back for the work until February of 2021, which many of you probably just gasped. But don't worry, <laughs> we we went we we went back and we reevaluated and and just based on the sheer need and what's going on, we're going to adjust that and we're going to do we're going to adjust from doing, an you know something on the a PSE poll and we're going to directly permit with the city of Issaquah, and we'll be doing underground work for the work that needs to happen to build out the network in this area up here in Squawk Mountain. So that is currently sitting in a permit with the city, which my understanding is they're expecting to hopefully uh, complete the review by the end of this week, which means we would start work next week. So that area could see enhancements as early as next week, assuming permitting and everything goes as planned. So I will, I'm gonna, that's, that's, that's the most complicated, I, I know it's complex, but I do wanna just highlight, you know, this is the map and then as I was talking, I, before I jump into some other resources I do want to share with you, and, I, and I've shared this before, and resources that we'll get into is just because it is complicated, not, it's not always the network, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, that sometimes it can be a number of other variables that happen in between here and here that um, makes it complex sometimes where 
the assumption is that it's the network and then sometimes it's the equipment, sometimes it's the infrastructure of the home and where things are set up. And so it, it's something that um, I will provide some resources and maybe some you know kind of links to provide some resource options so that if anybody is to having those questions, how they can potentially do a quick troubleshoot on their own to determine if maybe it's something that they can resolve on their own or if it's something that it does require us having um, a technician or whatnot come in. And then what I did want to touch on, and it, I think it's really important to talk about that um, Superintendent Thiele was here as well, which our, we have a program called Internet Essentials, and we've had this program for 10 years now, and it's our affordable Internet program. And this program is, is very important. It's been important for 10 years, but it's really important right now. And what this program does is it really addresses the three, the, the primary or key three barriers to connectivity. And those typically are cost, so it's being able to afford the monthly cost. It's having access to equipment and or affording that equipment. And then also just under, if you achieve the first two, having the understanding of how to use the equipment and the internet once you do obtain it. And so this program covers those three different areas or barriers to entry. And the program is $9.95 per month. Um, there's no term, there's no contract term, there's no credit check, there's no fee for installation. The speeds are 25.3. It does include in-home Wi-Fi, and it also includes unlimited access to the, you know, external or um, outdoor Wi-Fi hotspots. So it's it's been a really important product right now. Something to share is that we have partnered, or we, as part of three other vendors with um, the Office of the Superintendent for Public Construction, we are providing Internet Essential services throughout the state to various school districts. We're pri providing the first two months for free. And then OSPI is covering the remainder of the bill to support students' need for connectivity through the end of the 2020, 21, 21 school year. So it's been a very busy time for this program and a very important time for this program. And so I just I want to share this with you. If anybody feels that this is something they would like to share with either a community or within, I know this Issaquah is included in the program for um, the Office of the Superintendent. So I, I just think this is important to know. I will just call out also, this is available in various languages. We have support for up to 240 languages, as well as in, in language as well for the application and, and support. So just a, a really important program that a lot of people just are not aware of. And then as I wrap up, I just wanna share um, some, some resources for you. And I and Autumn, I don't know if you or folks wanna share this in the chat. I'm happy to share them as well after the meeting, but. Ultimately, Xfinity.com forward slash hub is a fantastic, just all encompassing place to go where you can find a number of resources you search, you find, you can find ways to make sure that your home signal is set up and that that's been optimized. You can also do some troubleshooting. There's a service outage um, map or, that you can look at. And again, it does require you to have credentials as a customer. And then the status sensor, cent center is also a great place to go as a customer. It allows you to kind of look and get updates on your connectivity, your services, your network, et cetera. And then I, one thing I also wanted to provide was, um, the other thing is, I mentioned it down here is my account app. So if you're a customer, there's an application that you use oftentimes to pay a bill. For some of you that have, you know, XFi or the XFi Home app, which allows you to control usage on your devices, et cetera. Um, that's another great resource. And, and how the network is built is that you as the end user, the subscriber will be notified of an outage before anybody else. So I just wanna share that because it's in that's how the network is built is to notify the subscriber and the individual using the network of the concern or the issue with the network. So oftentimes as customers will know before, I mean, internally the engineers and it will have, we have a, a building or an engineer group called the XOC that watches and maintains the network and they'll be notified. But as far as um, the city being notified or whatnot, the customers will know before the city will ever know simply because the network is built that way. It is, melt, it is, it is built to in, inform the person that's using the network. So I just wanna share that because I think sometimes that's helpful when um, folks are reaching out to the city and the city has not been made privy because it's, because it's intended to inform the end user first. So I will stop sharing my screen and I'm happy to pivot over uh, Mayor Polly to any questions or if we have time. Thank you, Carla. I mean, one thing the pandemic and the economic crisis and everything has done, it's changed the hierarchy of needs. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, 
broadband at home now is one of the most important things for your job, for your ch children's education. I just wanted to follow up on one question I had for you uh, a few weeks ago, and that is um, thank you for the resources. We will definitely make sure that if there are supportive resources, we include them on our website. Um, yes. We've got a bunch of stuff up there. Um, second, um, I had asked if it was possible to uh, communicate with a neighborhood where work is being done through, I think it was, you know, I can't remember what you said it was, myaccount.com yeah. or whatever. Is it possible to let folks on Squawk Mountain with service know about the plan? Yes, and I, I, you did bring that up, so thank you for the reminder. So I'm, I'm looking into what options we have for that, and I will tell you specific to Squawk Mountain, we will most likely be either doing a notification to their app or a follow-up letter of sorts, a hard letter that kind of indicates the work. Yeah. Thank you for that. We'll get into some questions right now first and comments. Uh, Marisol, you're up first. Thank you, Mayor Polly. Uh, this is Marisol Fieser, and actually it's a, it's a question more than a comment. Um, um, so I, you were talking about the essentials internet, and um, last time I checked, I, I know that it, usually if the family fell behind in any payment, they were not eligible for to have the essential. Is this still the case? Uh, that's a great question, Marisol, and thank you for asking because that, that is that has completely been waived and that is not a policy right now based on the current crisis. So if you have any past due balance, if it's $100 or less, we'll completely pay it off or just put you current at zero. If it is above $100, then we still pay it off or bring you current and then um, we put you back into um, a payment plan if that's necessary. If it's a you pay off $100 and then the remainder above 100 would go into a payment plan. So that is not a policy or an eligibility requirement right now. So I think that's a great point and thank you for asking. Great question. Um, next up we have Nina. Hello, thank you. This is Nina Milligan. Thank you, Carla, for this um, information and the presentation. I have a question that's kind of um, taking a step back a little bit. I'd like to learn more about how a uh, cable provider like Comcast what is the handshake with the city and what sort of expectations are on both sides as far as maybe performance standards or, um, you know, how does um, Comcast what uphold its end of the deal and what is the deal? Um, I'm sure. a little um, unclear about how franchises work. I, I'm happy. To, I just want to make sure, Mayor Paula, you don't want to. I mean, I'm happy to take that, but it's because you did address as a city handshake. So there's no handshake. Um, essentially is <laughs> uh, to your point it is we are a cable franchisee so we we do a cable we we sign a cable franchise and agreement with the city and as part of that just to kind of i don't want to get too in depth here but it is specific to cable services so as far as internet services just as a clarity we cable is federally regulated and so it is a fcc i'm sorry fcc regulation and then as part of that, there's been some updates or changes this year and some and some reaffirmations with orders. And this year there was a reaffirmation with what's called the 621 order that essentially indicates that through our cable facilities, it's we can provide mixed use or other products and services. And so as far as um, our contract or agreement with the city, it's specific to cable facilities and cable services. And then Autumn, I see you. I, I'll let, I'll let Autumn, Autumn join in if she wants to add anything to that. <laughs> That's, that's exactly right. Yes, it's just limited to cable, not to um, internet service. That said, we do have a great relationship with Comcast and Carla and, and her team have been responsive and we've expressed concerns from many residents, specifically on Squawk Mountain, about internet um, service. And so I'm, I'm grateful that the work is, um, some of it's completed and, and more is underway. And um, I'm excited that um, Carla came and spoke to this group because I'll be sharing this video with our Squawk Mountain neighbors via next door very soon. So oh, that will be the, the first start of our, our outreach and, and kind of closing the loop on uh, what Comcast has done and improvements that will be coming soon. And thank you, Autumn. I think thank I appreciate you. your partnership. And Carla, we have a couple more questions for you. Next, Sashi, followed by Ron. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, Carla. It was very good information. I have comment and maybe a question too. Uh, about your IE, Internet Essential, uh, it looks pretty attractive, you know, like $10 for 
25 Mbps. I didn't understand that slash three, but my experience in general with any company is that if they say we are giving you 25 Mbps, the real speed is always much less, 10, 15 for download. And for upload, if they say it's 10, it will be like three to five. And that's with not only Comcast, with also other company. And uh, so now imagine a household, they are, they fit into your criteria for low income. Uh, I hope you have updated that, which is around, I think is uh, almost, uh, I, I think it's around $59,000 income per year. It's been updated now after 1989. So, uh, so I don't know about your criteria, but I hope it is a correct one. So uh, imagine a family with three to four children all going to school, all are working on the same internet at the same time. The speed will be still low and they'll be frustrated. How are you going to help them? Yeah, Shashi, I think that's a good question. I can't speak to advertise speeds or something that I, I, I hear you. And what I would tell you is I shared with you the complexity of our network and I there's just so many variables that just on this call, I can't I can't I can't say what may be might be causing that. What I can speak to, though, is in regards to you make a really under a point that I work in every day is around families right now and understanding the connectivity. And so what I would tell you is this is where I want to be very clear that this is not a competitive play. This is where all telecom wireless wireline any kind of service provider needs to step up and provide similar programs. And so between the hotspots and we're partnering across the state and I will tell you, I just got off the phone this morning with Franklin Spears, Franklin Pierce School District and their partner, they're kind of figuring out how many hotspots can you get, they give to these students and how many can they do with internet essentials. So what I would tell you is it's a collective effort across all of the providers. And so, and I would say right now, my understanding is similar programs to internet essentials. I don't, I don't believe, I think, wave might offer one i i'm not privy to many outside of the wireless i know t-mobile announced one which is great so what i would say is it's a collective effort and i really this is not about competition it's just understanding all the resources available and having everybody come to the table to help out right now thank you carla ron you get the last question of the day i believe for carla thank you madam mayor um so uh and thank you very much carla for uh, coming today. Um, I'm one of those Comcast users on Squawk Mountain that has had a lot of significant problems with uh, with bandwidth. Um, so my job requires use of Skype and Zoom, uh, mostly Skype. And Skype is a very bandwidth um, um, intensive application. What is the recommended megabit package to mm -hmm. do to use Skype and Zoom? How does neighborhood volumes affect the performance? So in other words, if I want to make sure that I'm not having an interrupted um, application without spending you know, hundreds of dollars on bandwidth, what is the best package to have? And then two, does Comcast have any plans to go 5G? Wow, okay. Um, I'm gonna start with the end of your question just because I, it was, um, so 5G, <sighs> Well, let me, sorry, let me, I'm trying to think there's so, it gets a little complex. So 5G, I would say, let me share, we do have a mobile product, which is Xfinity Mobile. And as part of that program, it uses, and we partner with the Verizon network. So that does use 5G in the networks, in the neighborhoods or communities that Verizon offers 5G from a wireless perspective. Comcast doing our own 5G, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure about what that looks like going down uh, the road. I would say, and I do think it's important to mention, though, our entire network across anybody, any zip code, anywhere that we provide service, it's gig, gigabit capable. And so I just that's an important note because it's not certain pockets where there's a certain kind of network. Anywhere that anyone has Comcast service um, has capabilities of having up to gig services. And the network in place today supports up to 10 gig, and that's being reviewed right now in Cable Labs. So I would tell you, I don't know what that looks like, but I know there's a ton of road mapping and, and testing going on. As far as the package, um, it's a really good question. <laughs> I would tell you that I do know, because to your point, I oftentimes turn my video off just to save um, on certain calls. What I would say is I have some, some guidelines or kind of structures of what is supported by, for example, the 25.3 that we provide for Internet Essentials. 
supports up to multiple Zoom calls um, for families with children. And so I have some guidance around how much usage those different programs take up, if you will. And I'm happy I can provide that after this call and that can help guide that would be great. Your, your package. Yeah. Thank you, thank Carla. You. And thank you for coming today. This has been a hot topic in our town and probably everywhere for you know five or six months as soon as we realize that we're all going to be working from home and teaching from home and visiting our family from home. <laughs> so um, thank you for coming today. Your presentation was very good. Thank you for all the resources and also for the work that you're doing to help those that cannot afford uh, the tools that they need to keep things going. So thank you for that. And thank you for yeah. joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for having me. And if any folks on this call have questions, um, Autumn has my contact information and I'll share everything I, I shared today with the call with Autumn. And fun fact, Carla does live in Taos, which is she does. really close by. <laughs> so she, she knows all about our community. So thank you very much, Carla. Um, thank you.